On this week's episode, we sit down with artist Mike Brown, uh, Kazi, the owner of Strange Things Emporium, and Zlatan, a promoter, to talk to us about this Saturday's event, Goths and Freaks. We also brought you back some footage from last week's event, Psychosexual, in case you missed it. So stay tuned, because you're watching On The Spot. Artist, musician Mike Brown, and current designer of the Apparel Line 315 AM. So, Mike, how did you transition from musician to artist? Uh, well, I didn't find it a hard transition just because uh, art is just expression. Mm -hmm. So, music is art, drawing is art. Like, uh, I do a little bit of spoken word poetry as well, and I even consider that to be a form of art. It's all about just getting what's inside out. And uh, I found that. The transition just kind of happened naturally. Yeah. So then, uh, why did you choose uh, to create your art on cardboard as opposed to the traditional you know, paper method? Uh, the cardboard was simply born out of necessity. Um, I had ballpoint pens. I like a smooth writing pen when I'm doing my writing just because I write fast. So if it skips or bumps, I tend to miss words. It's like an old typewriter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I had my ballpoint smooth flowing pens just around and there was cardboard at the vendor, uh, no paper, just because we don't have, like we don't have printers, we don't, we're not an office. So just drawing on a cardboard happened naturally and now it's hard to move away from the feeling. Uh, yeah. I've been slowly transitioning to cardstock, hoping to eventually move to paper. Definitely. Um, so then how important is, you, is it to you to express yourself, whether you're doing it uh, through music or through art? Um, like, I mean, art is expression, so, like, it comes this weird uh, inborn need to express myself just to get the feelings out that I don't know how to put into words with anxiety and depression. Um, but it's also, hmm, because I don't want to express myself at the same time. Um, just I, I tend to bottle up and keep that inside so it's it's a constant back and forth uh, between expressing myself and not expressing. Uh, so then how do you feel you've grown learning that you have this new tool of communication because it sounds like that's what you're doing uh, with your art you're yeah. talking to people yeah so how do you feel uh, you've grown uh, now that you've discovered this? Um, I found a lot of people um, just when I talk more about what my art is about, because it is about anxiety and depression, uh, will come forward and tell me just like, you know, I, I get that. And it's just, it's because it's such a hard thing to put into words that it's like, I don't know, super important to get it on paper and move your hands and everything, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so then where do you find some of your inspiration other than anxiety and depression is there anything else that um, kind of nudges the pen forward? Uh, lately, it's just been everyday life. Uh, or I've been rehashing old designs because it's, I don't know, almost a necessary evil of art is cannibalism. Uh, just the stuff that you, <laughs> just the stuff you haven't used, uh, okay. rehashing it and ripping it apart and redoing it <laughs> just to... cannibalism. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then, so uh, I, yeah, I look for a lot of my inspiration just uh, in everyday life, but I pull a lot of inspiration from music just because I am a musician. I use a lot of, uh, if you follow my Instagram, a lot of lines from songs when I originally draw the pieces that I move later because I don't want to get sued. Uh -huh. But <laughs> yeah, and so it's just, it's important to look for inspiration and everything. Uh, so there are tons of hidden messages, I think, in your, oh, yeah. in your art. Yeah, I try and... I try and keep them interesting. Um, if you really want to dig apart and look at them, uh, it comes from not wanting to come out and say it, just wanting to be cryptic, but at the same time being like in your face about it because that's just who I am. 
<laughs> so then what are you currently working on? What in-your-face project is uh, on the burner? Uh, my biggest in-your-face project, I have a huge cardboard piece I'm working on. It's, uh, I think it's four by five feet of oh cardboard. And yeah, I draw with ballpoint, so it's all tiny. <laughs> I, I like to fill in space. So it's going to take a while. Yeah, I've seen your designs. They're very, very intricate. Uh, so then how many hours do you think you've invested in this project already? I've probably probably put about 16 to 18 hours oh into my it. God. I'm about a quarter done. A quarter done? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So uh, having your art start off as doodles on cardboard uh, to busy yourself during the workday, did you ever think that your art would end up on t-shirts and sweaters and on the backs of people? Uh, no, not at all. Um, I, like I said, I originally drew them just to kind of power through and like move my hands and do something. Uh, so when I noticed people were really, really starting to like them, it kind of like caught on, like maybe people want this and I don't I even remember who originally suggested it, but someone I think originally suggested, uh, stickers and I thought that was pretty cool, but I wanted to go a step further with shirts mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Can you get any stickers? Yeah, it's in, it, it's in the plans. Okay, yeah. well I'm very excited <laughs> to see what you have in store next for us, sir. Thank you very much. Last Friday night, Winnipeg Psychedelic Productions held their event Psychosexual at Underground Revival, and our cameras were there to catch all the action. Amazing decor, friendly crowd, and most importantly, great music were all accounted for to make this one of the best raves of the season. We already can't wait for this fall for their next installment. I hope you enjoy.
Ozzy, the owner of Strange Things Emporium, and Zlatan, the organizer of a new venue called Goths and Freaks happening this Saturday night at Club 3D down Portage Avenue. So welcome to the show. Thank you. First we want to get into um, talking about the goth scene in Winnipeg oh. um, and how Ozzy's a beloved favorite has closed its doors, unfortunately. Sad to say so. Sad, yeah, sad to say so. Um, so, would you consider uh, Gotham Freaks being the new After Dark? I would very much like to. See, the thing is this, uh, that, now, ever since Aussies has closed, yes, there have there, there been a few uh, uh, events here and there that have been taking, taking place, but nothing in, nothing in terms of a regular actual uh, night going on anymore. Now, uh, with Club 3D, we are hoping, that, okay, now this is just a, 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 a test event pretty much also. Now, we're hoping that uh, that well, uh, if if the thing goes well enough, uh, they might uh, even may possibly consider uh, giving us a regular night there. Yeah, of course, like having a permanent residency almost, which would be fantastic. So we do need a new venue in this city. Yeah. yeah so like uh, even uh, if if it's just one night at uh, just one Saturday at the end of um, of the month, that's fine too. See things also uh, the uh, uh, also the last time we've had. An, an, an event or, or night like this in actual club setting was was at Monty's uh, at the Royal Montcalm Hotel uh, the, the way way back then the, 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 about four or five years ago and all that and uh, this is actually the, basically the first time that in, um, since then that uh, the one that we're having it in an actual club nightclub setting more or less. okay yeah. that sounds that sounds exciting yeah. um, I hope it goes well going into uh, performing. We've seen fire dancers, we've seen hoop dancers, we've seen go-go dancers, some poi. What kind of performances do you plan on having for Gotham Freaks? Ah, okay. <laughs> well, we're happy to bring back uh, Burns the Dragon uh, for the third time in Winnipeg. Uh, what of a fellow he is. Um, yeah, basically, uh, a freak show performer. Uh, does does a myriad of amazing things. Based, okay, just uh, most fun you have being grossed out. Let's say that, you know. For example, like... <laughs> grossed uh, out. Grossed well, out. Yeah, 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 for example, stuff like, oh, let's say that, okay, uh, having uh, uh, things stable to his body, uh, walking on broken glass and... Glass and, eating, he did that for a while there. Uh, Are you guys hearing this? <laughs> uh, yes. And now, uh, mind you, the, the, uh, the one trick which I cannot bear to watch is when he... Are we at, uh, how much are we actually able to say here? Okay, uh, the condom through the... Um, uh, can we see this? The condom that goes uh, through the nose and the mouth. And comes out the mouth. mouth. You know, you know like how people do it with spaghetti? Oh. He does that with other items. And I can't watch it at all. Oh. Uh, uh, no. Wow, well, this no. sounds like an intense Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, the other thing also is that uh, now, now, in the past, it was only him. But this time, uh, he's bringing with him two friends of his. Uh, I forget their names, oh my god. But anyway, uh, okay, uh, one, uh, yes, uh, one lady, okay, she's uh, uh, sort, of, uh, the, the sort of illusions and magic and all that. I believe there's also some sword swallowing also involved, but don't say that. Yeah. Now, uh, occasionally, uh, he, uh, he also has done stuff uh, with fire, and well, mind you, because of the low seating of Club 3D, perhaps he might maybe uh, do his act outside in the parking lot. In the parking lot or the smoker's patio. They do have a small one out there. Exactly, yes, yes. Oh my god, now talking about that, it uh, makes me really want to go. That is super exciting performances, like best that I'm hearing right now. Yeah. Well, we still have the, if for the squeamish ones, we still have the go-go dancers and we oh, do have yes. the hoop performers. Perfect. Right. So I'm going to be one of the performers itself. Um, I'm going to be doing with my LED hula hoop and stuff. Hopefully body painted. Oh. Fingers crossed though. Safe. Safe. Oh, yeah. She, um, <laughs> does actually come through or not with the deal. But, um, so there, there will be some, um, but yeah, there will be some other performances just in case. Oh, that sounds, for me personally, that sounds absolutely phenomenal. I would, I'm, I'm, I wanna go, I have to go. Like, yeah. after talking about all that. Um, okay, so going into um, outfits now, like I saw uh. on your flyer that you have a contest for the two best outfits for Goths and Freaks. Uh. So, uh, for some new people and for all of our viewers, what kind of outfits would you guys say, especially Kazi, because you run Strange Things Emporium? Right. Um, well, usually in the past we've seen a lot of um, gothic kind of eras, right? So, I mean, we've seen the Victorian with the tight corset, bustle, dress, uh, bustle dresses, you know, with layers and layers. We've seen the giant hairdos, we've seen 80s rocker, um, we've seen everything. Thigh high boots, PVC, uh, latex and spandex, like small little crinoline outfits. Like, we're not going to be basing it on just one style. We just want you to dress up and try your best. Like, huge gothic makeup, you know, even get some other colors in there and 
bigger hair, the better. Personally, I love when girls do hair. I can't do anything <laughs> with it. So I try to get other people to. Well, this is me. It's normally it's just straight. <laughs> yeah, that's about where I am at too. Maybe a little bit of color. But um, normally, like I said, a lot of girls and guys will show up in corsets, underbusts, um, little Eyeliner. vest jackets, yeah, collars, leashes, you name it, we've seen it, like spikes and stud jackets everywhere. Not good for a mosh pit, mind you, no, but so. for no, very something... Painful, very painful, very <laughs> Yeah, but for something like this, it works rather well. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, okay, well, it's interesting, interesting also that, like, on the, okay, on the poster itself, it mentions the best male or female. Begin again. On the poster itself, it mentions the best male and female costumes. However, though, uh, because, I mean, now, as I said to my friend, that a canvas knows no gender. And, and now, what you got here is that, is that like, you know, that the, it, it could be a couple, a male, two males, uh, or, or, or two, two females. females. All matters is just uh, is just how much work they put into their outfits and um, and how how awesome they look. Oh, yeah. yeah. And of course, how much fun they have as well, right? That too. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Which from from all the performers that you guys are saying that are going to be in there, I have no doubt everyone's going to have a blast. So that might be a hard one to choose, right? Um. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Especially since it's not going to be gender biased anymore, so we can't just pick out one male one female. We're going with across the board, and I mean. I know a lot of guys who put so much effort oh. into their clothing as well as females. So I mean, it would be really hard. Um, but Just yeah, to do one, guess, one yeah, for each gender. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I know some people might complain about that, but you know what? New era, throw the genders out the window and just move oh, on. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Wow. Awesome. That sounds totally awesome. I wish I had an outfit. I have to come shopping at your store and I'm going to get some outfits. Um, so we'll go into um, DJing. Um, who are you gonna have there to ah, perform for DJing? That's right. Okay. Well, first, okay. Uh, the uh, of course, first of all, there the, uh, there is myself, DJ Evil Bastard. That's cool. I like uh, the name Evil Bastard. You guys got that. <laughs> and unfortunately, okay, like when we mention our event uh, in the Winnipeg Free Press, I I, I can only mention uh, the other D, the other DJ, sorry, DJ Nuvo, uh, who now she by the way uh, she has been a uh, um, close. Friend of mine for almost 20 years, and she's DJed with me at Wellington's, at D Machine, and Aussies. Um, a wonderful person she is. And but yeah, so anyway, but yeah, so uh, yeah, so she's the other person. And I said we had to, we only had to mention her name uh, on the event for the free press because of course, uh, Bastard doesn't look very good uh, in the. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, 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 not so much, not. especially when you have evil right yeah, in front right, of it, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, oh, yeah. On well, no, the just I mean, like, yeah, the, 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 there have been some places where uh, we couldn't put up posters because of the. Uh, because of my name, on those I said. Oh. Okay, no, no. but that's what it is. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but as it is, yeah, but it is she and I who, uh, who are doing the, the, uh, the music, uh, music um, that, that evening. And uh, yeah, so um, um, and it's, that's, it'll be awesome. Wow, and you were just saying that you had a friendship for over 20 years now. Uh, I've known her since, the, I believe it was in 1989, uh, since when we, when we first started going to Whiteons at St. John's Hotel, way back then. When the scene was young, more or less. Oh, yeah. And uh, okay, now myself, I started DJing at D Machine in 1996, and then she joined me in the booth uh, at Whiteons uh, around uh, 1999. Uh, yeah, wow. yeah, that, yeah. So and she's been at uh, since then. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She's fantastic to work with, and personally, being a dancer, where I'm just like play something a little more of this and every once in a while she'll look at me and throw in the most random track she can <laughs> just to throw me off the room. I think I witnessed one of your go dances at Aussies when that happened. Yes, I do believe you were there. <laughs> I, that I was night. definitely there for that one. Um, I think she threw in a bunch of heavy metal randomly in the middle of a um, yep. trance track yep. just to kind of throw us off and I mean it's always fun working for all these guys and it's a great honor to be a part of it because now, you know, it's so spontaneous and random, whereas before, you know, with certain events, it's just kind of like, oh, you're there, thanks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This sounds total. Again, you guys have to be there. Club 3D down Portage Avenue. So one last question. Um, so going back to the, the new event of Gotham Freaks, so if this all goes well, you're planning on keeping it at Club 3D or is it going to be... Venturing off, is there going to be more expected? Well, it's just that the Club 3D has such a wonderful setup over there. You, know, like you have the, this, uh, this wide, beautiful dance floor, not, not the, like, not the room itself, and you have the, this, the, this lovely outer patio. As I mentioned also, outside there is a glorious, luxurious parking lot outside. Oh. Thing. Like, it's yeah, it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fantastic because for the ones of us who have ever traveled to Aussies, parking was always the 
biggest Far castle the down there. Yeah. Yeah. Same as also anyone who's ever gone gone to the, any other shows at the Pyramid or, or, or at a, or a 200 of fame like that. It's always it's difficult sometimes. Parking down the street, having to walk two blocks by yourself, especially well, being like a little blonde girl downtown, right? Well, especially if... <laughs> <laughs> Not the greatest. Especially if, uh, if it's also in the in the dead of, uh, dead of bloody winter. I mean, like we had to uh, uh, going through through minus thirty Celsius with four hundred windchill uh, uh, to walk the uh, four blocks because um, that that was the closest yeah. that you could find. That's not that's nothing. Also, my first time at Wee Johnny's uh, when uh, the, there was a the, the Winnipeg Underground was was having their event over there, and um, I had to park way down on Alice uh, oh. uh, about almost like like a, a ten minute walk from there, like that, that because there's absolutely zero parking. Um, around the area where there was uh, um, McDermott and, and bad time, well, bloody hell, but that's all it was. I took one of big transit that night because I knew there was not going to be anywhere to park. Oh, no. wow. Yeah. So, all in all, great parking, great venue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hoping it all goes well for you guys. Yeah. I'm excited to see all these performances that you guys mentioned. Um, thanks again for stopping by, Hi. and we'll hopefully see you Saturday. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for having us on the show. Yes. No thank, problem. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Gina, the queen of the fairy girls, in the studio talking to us about the fairy markets. Until then, deep the underground. <laughs>